Today we start something kind of special. We are starting something that may never get finished because what I'm trying to do is crazy talk and may take a very long time to do. Might not be worth it. I might lose interest. I might, you know, things happen. This could take years. Who the fuck knows? Um, but for those who are unfamiliar, this is Every Episode Reviews, where we take uh, whatever I'm going to review next, in this case, Dragon Ball Season 1, the original series, and we review every single episode in that series, episode by episode reviews, basically. And, um, yeah, the reason, um, well, be before we begin, we, you might have a couple questions. One, why am I in this strange facility? Why am I, like, on a wheelchair? Why are there crickets outside? These are all great questions. Um, but Dragon Ball, like... I have a long history with the show. I will... I'm not gonna dive into it right now because there's so much, like... I would have to say it's a video in itself um and not to mention you know that's not what this is this is just the episode reviews and um normal I I'm not even gonna try to you know fast talk my way through the episodes because they're already gonna be long as fuck um there's like 30 some episodes in this season alone and I've had just 12 episode, every episode reviews, and those are like two hours, so... I'm sure each of these are just gonna be beast uploads, like... <laughs> not even fucking, oh my god, they're gonna be, it's gonna be awful. It's gonna be awful. Um, what am I doing? I, I, this is not how you YouTube. Um, but... I always encourage you guys to watch alongside me. Uh, I'll have annotations. Uh, this is episode one. Don't know the title. I'll have it somewhere, uh, hopefully on the screen post-production. Uh, hopefully you guys watched it, uh, or, you know, grew up on Dragon Ball, um, and I will give my information of this, of what I'm doing. One, I'm watching a dub. I can't watch it subbed. I just can't. I don't know, and when I, I hopefully want to review Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball GT even, Dragon Ball Super, again, this is years down the line probably before we can do any of this shit, but um, yeah, I want to review, review it all, and you know, might, might as, with how many years that will take, it, I might as well start out, you know, uh, you know, while I'm fresh, um, I could be an old wrinkly man, like Dragon Ball Z will never fucking end, it'll just, but um, yeah, uh, the, I'm watching a dub, and when I get to Dragon Ball Z, even though I already watched that dubbed, um, I probably will still, I, even though I, sh I could benefit from watching it subbed, I'm gonna watch a dub. Um, I will probably never watch it subbed outside of, you know, what I've already watched subbed, like, uh, Battle of Gods, um, not that I'm against it, um, maybe, maybe in the next life, um, if, uh, there's a life beyond this, and I just have unlimited free time, hell fucking yeah, I'll do that, or may, like, who knows, maybe I'll just, at one point in my life, get a midlife crisis and decide to watch Dragon Ball Z over and over again, for no reason, and I'll watch it subbed. Why the fuck not? Um, I've done worse things with my life. Um, another thing, I have not watched Dragon Ball. I know, I've seen Dragon Ball Z and Dragon Ball GT. I've seen GT before I watched the original Dragon Ball. Still haven't read the manga, um, and I still would consider myself a hardcore DBZ fan. Some people are just like, oh, what? Um, so, um, to give the introduction, I think that's what this is, this is the introduction. Before, like, we get into anything, note that, um, in a perfect life, 
I would already have seen all of this and then I would come back and rewatch it. But I do not have time for that. Um, and I just want to watch Dragon Ball. That's In the end, that's just what I want to do. I love DBZ so much. And to not have watched Dragon Ball has just been like this glaring, like... I, I, I feel like it's a problem. Like, I love the series so much. And yet, I won't watch Dragon Ball. And I think by making these videos, um, it, it might, like, detour me away, because, like, I don't, like, it's, it's hard to, like, keep reviewing and then keep filming right after. Uh, but hopefully we can do it. I really hope we can. Um, I did try to do an every episode review for another long shonen. Uh, oh, I can just fit. I tried doing it with Bleach. Didn't work out so well. Uh, maybe some other time. Uh, but yeah, this is every episode reviews season one. These are just kind of lightning in a bottle emotions of what I'm going through. You're getting a real live. Um, haven't seen the series before. I've seen a. I, I think I've seen like the first two or three episodes because I was just like I need to see it and then like. I think I watched you, like you Hawker show, and then I didn't finish that, and then other things out in the way, and my life is fickle. Um, you know, it's one of those. So um, it begins here. We are the the chain of Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, GT Super, all that shit. It begins right here, and good God, I I I have no idea where this is gonna go, where it's ending, um, let's just start with Dragon Ball Season 1, um, I own it, uh, hopefully by owning it, that will encourage me to watch it, um, I don't own the other seasons, even though I have access to them, eh, um, like, again, and I want to do reviews of other anime, obviously, so I can't just do Dragon Ball, but, um, We'll see. We'll see where this goes. Um, yeah, we're gonna go into episode one. Let's fucking do this. Okay, let's go. Alright, um, episode one. I've seen episode one and two. Um, I might do these in pairs, trios, fucking, maybe I'll do like a marathon and just, um, because that helps me. Like, it's difficult to just watch and then come to film and then watch and then come to film. Um, like, a lot of reviewers, like, they'll do episode reviews, and they'll do one fucking episode, and then they're done. Like, and I gotta do, like, fucking 31 of these motherfuckers, or I think, for this season. And, I, you know, that's, that's hard. It's, it's hard. Um, it's hard to do. Uh, not, it's not hard to do. I love doing it, but free time, um, filming, uh, resources pick your battles, all that shit, um, this has nothing to do with the episode, Dragon Ball, um, I don't really even want to give an introduction, because I assume if you're watching this, you've probably already seen Dragon Ball or Dragon Ball Z, I'll probably make references and shit to Dragon Ball Z, that's way down on the end, um, but, it, you know, if you're watching with me and haven't seen Dragon Ball for the first time, and you're watching it with me, then it's like, hey, um, I don't know what's gonna happen, like, for a lot of Dragon Ball, because I haven't seen it. I know certain people that die and shit, but, um, because that's, like, basic DBZ knowledge, but, um, I don't know the ins and outs, and I remember watching Dragon Ball Z and just, like, the cracks, you know, filling and just knowing the ins and outs and just, like, oh, like, how did we get from here to here, and, oh, that didn't really go how I actually did think it went. And I hope uh, Dragon Ball is like that. It kind of already is. Um, it's way different than DBZ. That's the first thing I'm going to say. It's, um, I, I feel very nostalgic. Um, and I know what you're saying. Like, you haven't seen it. How can you be nostalgic? Um, one, uh, the DVD, it's like a blue, it's like the orange box set. So the orange brick boxes are what I grew up on. And I got the Dragon Ball version. So even just the smell of them, the slip covers, like, uh, even just like a new, a new thing of like Dragon Ball that I haven't seen before. It was so good to pop that in. Even if it is just like talking pterodactyls and shit, like, I don't, I don't fucking care. 
Um, and, you know, even just a din 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 din, like, I have it, like, I'm nostalgic just to that. Just a din 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 din. And just maybe just like Goku's voice actor, Bulma's voice actor, like, actress. Um, I can, I'm nostalgic for shit I haven't seen before. Um, and just to see Goku, who. He's really fucking dumb. Like, I didn't, like, know it was as bad. Um, but we'll get to that. Um, we start off Goku, you know, um, he's, uh, living in the wild. Um, just kind of by himself, eating, like, animals and shit. Um, and he, he, all we really know about him is he once had a grandfather. He built this, there's, like, this shrine with this dragon ball on top. I... We all know what a Dragon Ball is. Um, and he refers to that, and I dropped my notepad. He refers to that as his grandfather. Um, and uh, it's like everything that his, his grandfather's memory, he's putting into this mystical Dragon Ball that he has no idea like what it actually does. And... Um, there's this, like, saber tooth tiger thing, um, that, it was in Dragon Ball Z, um, like, the early episodes with Gohan, and, uh, just other, like, filler, um, and I don't know if it's the same, like, saber tooth tiger, whatever the fuck it is. There are saber tooth tigers and flying guards, it's Dragon Ball. Um, but yeah, and, like, it, the world, before we did get into all this action shit, it was very, like, you know, it was kind of just, like, you know, a normal, like, not, like, super action shonen show. It had, like, a style, and Ak Akira Toriyama, ha he has a design style, and it carries over to just fucking Blue Dragon and the other bullshit he's worked on. Not bullshit, just I'm saying bullshit, just because I like that word, I guess. Um, I would never insult, you know, the, 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 that, uh, dragon, uh, quest and all that or shit. Cause I haven't, uh, I, I have so much shit to get to. <laughs> um, and then he's fishing and, you know, he's capturing giant fish. He has these superpowers. I didn't know he was this strong yet, but he's fucking strong. He, oh, before we get to Bulma, he's fishing. I'm... I don't need to see the little boy penis, like, uh, imagery, even if it's not like that, but it's like, eh, like, I didn't, if I was that animator, I would have, can I just, like, not film from this angle, um, or, uh, can I just not draw off this scene from this angle, but, um, yeah, uh, slightly uncomfortable with, you know, watching with the fam in the background, but, um, it's whatever, um, then he meets Bulma, you know, uh, who's like a star uh, character in the series, which is just, uh, it's so cool. Um, but basically, Goku, he thinks he's a monster and tosses her fucking car and could have killed her based off that one encounter. And, like, I never would have, like, guess that's that's how they met he picked up a car and tossed it like what the fuck um and and then she gets out and tries to shoot him that's the first she's just like ah i'm gonna shoot this little boy and you know it doesn't kill him obviously because then it would have got really dark and you know bulma she just i killed a little boy why does he have a tail and then she's trying to bury him and she, she just covered in blood she like goes to the nearest town why are you covered in blood just like i killed a monkey like small boy child um that's an alternate universe right there um so uh she obviously uh, they're both kind of just enamored with each other because they're very, they're very alien to each other. Obviously, Goku, one, he meets what, he meets a girl and he meets another human and he's just very intrigued. And Bulma is just like, what the fuck is this little fucking kid? 
and they're they're very different. And the, the humor, I'm not, uh, I'm not loving the humor. Um, uh, there, there's a lot of jokes about like, and and it is just like I, I if if Akira Toriyama and, or even just like the animators and the screen or and the writers knew what the show would probably become, they probably would have made it differently. But this is the beginning. We didn't know, and we have like dumb jokes, like anime, like weird sex jokes, with, uh, and they're sexualizing Bulma, who I'm not. I'm not sure her age. It's awkward. I can't. I can't do it. I'm sorry. Um, but we already have like the memes and shit that I've seen. We have a lot of it out of the way based off these two episodes I've seen. Um, but yeah, we learn about Bulma. She wants the Dragon Balls to wish for a boyfriend. And then we cut to Emperor Pilaf. He's introduced. He has his two henchmen. Uh, he learns that he needs all seven Dragon Balls, it's not just the one that he finds. And he is going to wish for world domination because he's so fucking original. Uh, who doesn't want that? Uh, there's that one scene with the, why would I want to look at you dirty fanny or whatever he says uh, that I've seen meme to death. Uh, it was just, it was like, like watching over 9,000 for the first time. Um, although the first time I watched that, I, I, very, uh, I didn't know my internet culture, and I don't even know if I knew that meme. Um, so yeah, the two take off, um, and then they get encountered by a talking pterodactyl who ties Goku's up and then takes off with Bulma. A talking, like a talking pterodactyl is like, oh, fuck you. Like, he has a personality. He's like, he's like a mobster pterodactyl. Like, oh my god, it's so, it's so fucking stupid. Um, and then, you know, Goku, he's like, oh, well, fuck you, and, like, hits it with the power bolt, and I'm almost like, 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 part of his fucking head breaks off, like, is, it, that's like animal abuse, but he's talking, so I don't, like, like, he had it coming, did he? Like, like, is this just, like, survival of the fittest? Like, I'm not gonna fucking get on his case if he's, like, Lion King in it and just is trying to circle of life to survive. But, but and Goku's just coming in, whipping people with his fucking power pole, like an insane little five-year-old. Like, but then he's talking, so I don't know what the fucking food chain is anymore. But and then the pterodactyls I've seen in other parts of DBZ, they're not fucking talking. And oh my god, um, I, I'll, I'm gonna again. Um, the scores don't take the scores into effect with these, um, because they're based. Like, you I, you can't, like, put the score from this anime into this anime. You can't even put it in, like, the same show. Like, compare them. Because, one, I haven't seen them, so I, I, like, I try to go off an average episode and just go up from there and down from there. But it's like, I don't... Take, take the scores with a grain of salt. Always. Um, not even just the episode reviews. My own, like, the scores... I don't, I don't try to focus on the scores. I like scores, but don't focus on them. Uh, please. Uh, but I will give this episode, episode one, whatever the title is, um, I will give it a four out of five. It was a great, um, it was great, literally, I don't want to, like, be, like, dumb about it, but, um, and this is kind of unfair, but it was kind of great just because it's the beginning. This is the beginning of so much, and obviously it's not going to be, like, like, a person watching is like, oh, Dragon Ball Z, let me just go to the beginning. Oh, what the fuck was that? Like, it's, you gotta, uh, kind of understand the entire series. Um, and the only way to do that is keep going. And, you know, maybe just skip to Z if you're, or maybe just skip to Super even. I don't fucking know. You could do, do a watch however you want to watch like um sometimes mixing that shit up i i i i can't do it like but some people they'll watch shit out of order they'll fucking just be like oh season three episode five you know i'll watch it like why the fuck not i can't do that um like because i'm i don't know if that's weird of me or if they're weird but um i can't do that um that's episode one 
Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. We are starting some here. Um, I'll see you on episode two later. Episode two. I believe I have the episode name. Um, I I wrote down just what popped up on the thing, and that was the Emperor's Quest. That might not be whatever I'm writing on the screen, wherever the fuck I'm putting it now, but um, because Dragon Ball changes like. The early dub shit and like they they redub it and it's like the episode title changes so much I'm just like fuck it um, I'll pick one of them um, and that might be the one I go with but um episode begins uh, we see more of Bulma's like uh, capsule corp thing we don't know anything about her dad being the smartest like dude in the planet yet but uh we just see her. We've already seen her, like, blow up cars out of these little capsule things. And now she's blowing up houses. Like, what the fuck? And, again, like... And then Goku's introduced to, like, electricity and, like, a TV and, like, all this other shit. And, um... It's so fascinating to see this, like, character that I've known... I don't remember ever, like, meeting Goku. I've always known who Goku was. I don't remember not knowing who Goku was. I just don't. So to see this character that I've known literally for all my life, to see him discover electricity, I'm like, what? Like, it's crazy. Like, how, he's so stupid. He's so stupid. I can see how, how Goku became him. And, you know, people people kind of, like, outside maybe of the show's community, and even within the community, really insult his intelligence and all that shit. And, you know, people who, like, fight against that. Well, martial, uh, martial arts-wise, he's a genius. And he does understand. And he does show that empathy for other people um and obviously that's like where it's the most important and uh knowledge isn't i don't people because i guess that's where the food chain it just keeps going and then intelligence eventually overcomes that and then it's like you consider yourself like a higher being because you're smarter and that's not like that's kind of a dick way of thinking um and Goku as a character, um, he wasn't supposed to be this big icon, and he wasn't, like, like, at first it was just Akira Toriyama just writing this manga based upon, uh, this monkey kid, based, like, uh, influenced by this other story. He's not thinking about Super Saiyan gods and fours and fusions and all this other bullshit, like, and aliens and universes and galaxies and supreme kais and snake ways and shit like no it's just like a fucking kid and he's like he's with this girl they're gonna go on adventures and there's gonna be weird dumb sex jokes that follow that i'm awkward and like uncomfortable watching and um yeah it's like we have to develop from that character onto this character and Goku obviously has grown so much from point A to point Z. Point Z? Get it? From point A to point Z. I'm so fucking... Uh, but he's still... We have to see that little boy who doesn't fucking know what electricity is. He's still that guy. Um, even though, you know, obviously he's changed. Um, but watching Dragon Ball Super now... Or Battle of Gods, I'm still just watching that, and I, it's the same guy. It's the same boy who fell, uh, spoilers, uh, I, if you haven't seen Dragon Ball Z and you're watching this, and you're starting at the beginning with me, I don't want to tell you to not watch, but it's, I'm, it's common DBZ knowledge, it's common internet, it's common everywhere knowledge that Goku, what Goku is, um, but if, if, I, I, I don't know, uh, if you know what I'm talking about, the boy that fell from places, you guys know what I'm talking about, um, after that we move on to Shu, 
and Pilaf, uh, Shu being the weird dog creature thing, uh, that he, and he can talk, and he's small, and I don't, and he's wearing this, like, little outfit, and he does this, this voice actor I really like, um, for the dub, I'm watching it dubbed, uh, as I said, if you didn't watch the introduction, um, he's, Pilaf is basically just this ultimate dick little, he's like a little kid running around, uh, without any, like, knowledge and shit, and I assume he's gonna get more power than, like, he should, and that'll backfire, and then, like, he's not, I don't, he's not, like, the villain villain, he's, like, the, I don't want to say rival, but, like, he's, uh, um, to kind of offset, uh, he's, he's just the contrast for now, um, he's not... I think gonna be like a main antagonist, uh, unless he becomes one, I don't know, I know like they're, he's part of the story in a big way, and obviously I've seen his, uh, scenes in the other ships, other than that, I don't know, dick about Pilaf, Shu, and Mai, um, and yeah, Pilaf, he like, he's like fucking torturing Shu, he has these big machines and he's like, he whips out a fucking chainsaw, and I'm like, whoa, Pilaf, calm your little blue ass down, like, you're about a, you're about a cut up, like, your best friend, do you have any other friends? I don't think so, you're about to chop him in half, you're about to, like, not chop in like, from the bottom up, because you're small, and that's how they tortured people medieval style, because I, like, the most painful way to get cut, and... And, like, because it takes a while for you to die. Fun fact. Um, because, like, we're slowly reaching uh, the vital organs. And, oh. Uh, I'm just picturing a little, like, dog cat thing just getting cut up, and I don't like it. Um, so, yeah. Uh, then there's the scene. I just wrote the scene, and the one scene that I, w I was like, I remember seeing, like, some of it online. I was like, that's not real. And I was like, why does it look real? Um, the scene with Goku. And it's fucking episode two. What the fuck? Um. It's almost like fan service. Um. But it's not. It's like fan service before we became this commercialized, uh, mega force that is, uh, anime today. Um, although, you know, at the same time, not at all. Uh, they're still poor and not making money and all this other shit at the same time. Uh, what was I saying? I said, oh yeah, um, the scene. Um, where Goku and there are some sexual innuendos and stuff with Bulma and he, you know, he's an innocent little kid and he's trying to find her tail and all this other shit and obviously he's like, looking in places he doesn't know not to look at and he says um you where he's like your balls are gone and mom is like what and then looks at looks for dragon ball she's like oh you must have had a dream and the scene kind of just cuts off there and i'm just like i don't want any more of that i'm sorry um it's not like so terrible but it's like it's not i just don't want it it's like, I'm not against comedy in the show, but not underage girls getting their skirts lifted up by a five-year-old version of my childhood hero. Um, that I'd prefer not that. Um, and then Goku, like, I fucking love him. He's just like, um, I'm gonna get some exercise. And he runs outside, picks up a giant rock, and just fucking breaks it. Like, for no reason. He's just coming out here like the fucking ultimate warrior. Just fucking, ah! Psh, breaks a giant rock. Then he runs, and then uh, we get the new character reveal that it's Turtle. Yay, we're meeting Turtle. I, again, I've met him. Uh, I've watched these first couple episodes before. Um, although I was very tired. Uh, I'm tired now. Not as tired as I was then. He's about to just fucking murk turtle, but he's like, hey, I'm a turtle. Don't, don't kill me. Don't kill me. 
please don't. And then Bulma, you know, conversation, conversation. Um, he should be at sea, but he's not. Goku is gonna help the turtle out real quick. And then Bulma's like, no, we gotta, we gotta stay, like, on the mission. And then she's, once she realizes, once she, she's without Goku, there's all, she's in a dangerous place. Go, she did say Goku makes a good bodyguard, so she, and there's dinosaurs and shit around that she has to, she has to run away from dinosaurs on a flying car. How does that make sense? What the fuck? Um, but yeah, she, so she reluctantly follows Goku, and I assume we're, that will lead us to Master Roshi. Um, and yeah, the pacing of the show is already, like, vastly different than DBZ. It's faster. Um, about, like, 150 episodes are, like, not as long faster. So, um, I'm, I'm looking forward to the future. Um, with that, um, I will give episode two a three out of five. Um, that being said, I hopefully will do more of these soon. Um, just watch more and more Dragon Ball. Again, I want to just fucking destroy through it. But, um, again, just, um, you know, because I, cause I watch shows with other people. And they don't want, like, when I'm watching a show with my friends or my girlfriend or my family, they, like, me running to a camera right after isn't always going to work. And a lot of them just don't like watch the anime or they already seen the anime I've seen or vice versa or so many things get in the way and um I'm rambling but it's like this is I already decided would be the uh long like so fucking long it does long this episode would be so fucking long it doesn't even matter so um that's my ramble um uh, I think that's it um dan 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 uh, that's that I I did the John Cena. Uh dan 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 na dan 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 na see you guys on episode three. Dan 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 na Alright, so in the middle of a Dragon Ball Marathon, um new location. Might cut a couple episode reviews right quick. Um if these are a little bit more fast paced, I apologize. We gotta get through these. We just gotta get through these. Um, this episode, at least what the DVD told me, um, is called the Nimbus Cloud of Roshi. That might not be what you're seeing somewhere on the screen. Uh, they rename episodes. It, shit gets fucked up. It really does. Um, so we got Bulma, we got Goku. They're on the road, on the road again. They meet this big-ass tiger dude who's gonna eat the turtle. Um, and we don't want that, you know. He's our friend. He's our turtle buddy. And, uh, Goku just whoops this giant tiger's ass, little five, three, however old he is, Goku, whoops his ass, um, and then they talk about, they have comedy about eating the turtle, like, oh, you, you wouldn't eat me, and Goku's like, oh, I, people just eat everything, what's wrong with people, I wouldn't do that, even though he literally later is talking about eating the fucking cloud Nimbus which is whatever, uh, we'll get to that. We get also got, uh, Pilaf and his gang, who is painfully reminding me of Team Rocket. Um, like, that's the impression I'm getting. And why are my and Shu working for Pilaf? Like, I never understood that. Like, they have Shu, he's like a scared, scared person, he's like afraid to leave. My, I don't, I don't understand the reason... They're with Pilaf. He's obviously a terrible boss. Um, but yeah, again, some strong Team Rocket vibes. Um, yeah, after that, uh, Turtle thanks the Goku and Bulma for bringing him to the ocean. And he's like, hey, I'm gonna bring a present. Be right back. When he comes back, he's got Master Roshi on his back. We meet Master Roshi. Oh my god. I, I love pretty much every long-term Dragon Ball Z character I love. I can't really think. There aren't that many Dragon Ball characters I can say I hate or even dislike. Um, 
Roshi, uh, you know, he's very, uh, subdued for this episode. He's kind of just like, he's just the turtle hermit. That's what he is. Um, and he offers the Nimbus Cloud to Goku, which Goku obviously can ride, but Roshi can't. I remember seeing, like, the clips when I was a child, um, and I did, I did watch this episode back when I did try again, Dragon Ball. Um, however long ago that was, um, not that I remember most of it, uh, but yeah, he, Go, Roshi can't ride it, Goku can, and then there's another awkward comedy where Roshi's like, he tells Bulma, like, cause she won't get a gift, he's like, let me see her underwear, and it's really fucking weird, um, I know in Japan they sell that shit, they sell use underwear and vending machines. And that's not right. I don't stand by that. And, but, you know, hey, different cultures, um, you know, wrong is right, right is wrong. I, I don't like that comedy. And, and Bulma, she wasn't wearing anything. Because of the fucking earlier scenes and, uh, and the Goku and the childish and the humor and it's, uh... So yeah, that happened. We're just gonna get through that. No more comedy involving Bulma's private parts. Please. Um, she's like 14. It's weird. Um, d d I'm sorry, I'm getting awful camera angles for you. Uh, so yeah, we... After that, Pilaf and the gang, they... He, and she gets a Dragon Ball by doing this. Roshi has a Dragon Ball around his neck. He doesn't know what it does. And then Roshi, uh, he comes home and he finds Pilaf and the gang just going through his house. There's this weird crocodile guy. Don't know who he is. And he's just sleeping there while they raid uh, Kame House. And yeah, uh, I was thinking about some because at the end of the episode, that you know because. They part ways, Roshi and Goku, so I'm interested to see how they meet again, because, you know, Roshi is his teacher. Um, so yeah, uh, they have an awkward exchange, where Roshi's just like, yeah, I gave the Dragon Ball away. And so Pilaf leave, and they need a push, which is just hilarious, so... Roshi put the hole in their ship, and then pushes them, and they, you know, their shit gets flooded... And that's how the episode ends. Very good episode. I love meeting Roshi. I love how he ended the the episode. Um, Goku almost ate Nimbus. That would have been bad. I know he eats clouds in other world, um, which is funny. Uh, and it, they look like that. The clouds. Uh, that's besides the point. I'm tired. Um, this episode, I'll give three out of five. It was a good episode. Good to meet Roshi. He's not a main character yet. He's just, you know, another character. Isn't quite as developed as he will in the future, but that's besides the point. I'll see you guys on the next episode. Blah. All right. This is, I believe, episode four. I could be wrong. Um, and yeah, we are. We already got like five fucking Dragon Balls. We are, it's, it's it's almost as fast as it how it was like in the future, in the Z. Um, we got three balls to go at the beginning of the episode though. Um, this episode, by the way, uh, deep according to my title is Oolong the Terrible, and we are introduced to Oolong, and he's a villain. And just that concept is hilarious to me, um, because Oolong is obviously very, a very different person to me. Um, but yeah, I did, I remember watching this as a child, and I was like, what the fuck, Oolong? Like, kidnapping little girls and all this shit? And, uh, when I heard that, I was like, I didn't know what to think of that. Um, but they, they made it pretty... They made it not as bad as it could have been. But, um, Bulma and Goku, they go to his village, knowing the Dragon Ball is going to be there. Uh, this old woman has it, uh, but she, her village is plagued by, uh, 
Oolong the Terrible, a shapeshifter who's just, you know, stealing little girls. And, uh, after that, um, Goku. Goku, by the way, is just patting vaginas. Like, like yep, you're a girl. It's funny, but it's, like, kind of childish, but it's whatever. Um, I, it's a run-on joke, but by now it's kind of funny. At first I was like, this isn't funny, but by now I'm sort of getting used to it. Um, and then Oolong comes around, and Goku and Bulma, uh, well, Bulma at first is like, oh, I'm just gonna stay in here, and then he turns into a attractive male, and she's like, oh, let me come out, and then he turns into a bull, and she's like, well, fuck this, and, uh, each of the transformations just had a fantastic voice actor, like, when he was a bull, he had this really just shitty accent, and, uh, yeah, that was, uh, that was hilarious. Um, I'm watching the dub, just to repeat myself. Uh, so yeah, but then we learn Oolong's powers only last for five minutes, a pa a transformation. Um, and slowly Goku's chasing him, and his five minutes are up, and he's in the air. Goku has to save him, and then he eventually forces Oolong to take him to the girls and they are in a giant palace and they're just like living the high life and he basically wanted them just to cook and clean around his palace for him and also you know uh that was about it but then they got really annoying and he's just doing favors for them and uh they didn't even want to go back out but uh yeah that's basically the whole episode. What I thought, Oolong as a character, uh, I don't know how he's gonna, like, join the gang or come back later in the series. Uh, that'll be interesting, uh, to see. Also, uh, I noticed that uh, we're going with the one episode formula, uh, where it's like, each episode is its own adventure. I like anime, some people, like, who, like, are anime like enthusiasts like if they criticize cartoons oh that's what they'll say that's the one episode thing is not a bad concept it's all about execution and like case in point right here i do just like i'm so excited to see all the plots and the red ribbon army and the king piccolos and all that shit i'm gearing up for that but this is episode four out of like hundreds so or not hundreds like a hundred 50 tops, but, uh, we'll get there when we get there, um, as for now, I'm just enjoying, uh, seeing all my, all these characters that I know get, like, introduced, like, how they, everyone else got to see them, and, um, yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying myself, uh, I'll give this episode a 4 out of 5, uh, and that's about it, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next episode, bye! So yeah, um, let's just, uh, get all of our Yamcha memes out of the way. Um, Yamcha. Yamcha, Yamcha, Yamcha. 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 Yamcha was introduced. Uh, Yamcha the Desert Bandit. And that's, again, just seeing the, where these, these characters in their developing stages. Yamcha is a developing, uh given the bandit kind of gimmick and he's like very official like oh, I'm Yamcha and uh, he's afraid of women Ugh. and yeah not that he gets any more interesting in the future uh boom take that Yamcha but uh yeah basically Oolong's kind of like joined the gang I didn't expect that I didn't know that's how that transpired but whatever uh from there, uh, there's a bit more comedy, he, Oolong is, like, basically just trying to run away, he's like, fuck these people, and they basically need him but to help out, I guess, so, they keep him around, uh, forcefully, <laughs> kind of, um, and there's more fucking comedy with Boma and her fucking, if there's one more joke about Boma's underwear, I swear to god. Uh, but that being said, we move on. Yamcha's introduced. Poor is also introduced. Apparently she went to, uh, transformation school or whatever to, with, uh, Oolong and he picked on her there. 
and that's how they know each other and that explains their whole transforming powers and uh that's where we left off with that Yamcha and Goku have a fight like a fight fight Goku's kind of hungry and that's why he kind of losing a little bit even though he kind of should be winning Yamcha's got that wolf fang fist though who really gives a fuck um I did think that was cool as a kid though we are running through a lot of events really fast like the whole Yamcha thing I didn't think this would happen for a while um but yeah, Yamcha also reminds me of Jet from Avatar The Last Airbender. I don't know why, just... He does. But uh, yeah, he sees Bulma, and then he just runs off, because he's afraid of women. And uh, that's hilarious. Um, and the episode ends there. And he's like, oh, I'll get them. Uh, so, yeah. yeah uh, good episode. I'll give it a 3 out of 5. Uh, I should talk a little bit more about it. I, I'm, I'm liking what's going on, uh, not a bad episode yet, I'm intrigued with everything, um, I do want just a little bit, like, I want something to happen, a little more urgency, um, we didn't get a Dragon Ball in this episode, but it's like every episode almost, it's like, oh, new Dragon Ball, so, I'm sure, and I want Krillin to be introduced, and Roshi, and all that, uh, but we'll get to that. Um, so yeah, I'll see you guys in the next episode. <clears throat> so uh, keep an eye on your Dragon Balls, kids. Keep an eye on your Dragon Balls. Um, coming close to the end of Disc 1, if you're watching the blue box sets like I am. Uh, that being said, uh, this episode was just kind of a free-for-all. For the Dragon Balls, people. Once you get word, people are really shitty on this show. Uh, and there's not, when I think about it, Goku's not really, uh. He's not a good character. He's kind of, you know, just a jerky kid. It's kind of like It's Always Sunny, where it's just like a lot of awful things happening to awful people. Uh, not that. Bulma and Goku are just awful people. They're just, you know, yeah. Sorry for the lighting, by the way. I am too lazy to get up to turn on the lights. And as you can probably see. Um, but yeah, got the, uh, Dragon Ball up on the screen. Um, and yeah, uh, there was another more of Bulma being naked and ha ha comedy. Classic comedy. Yeah, and uh, then Yamcha scheming, he overhears about the Dragon Balls, uh, Goku tells Oolong about the Dragon Balls, god damn it, Goku, uh, Oolong's, uh, wish is to have a harem with 300 women, and, uh, yeah, and then night time rolls through him, Yamcha tries to break in, uh, there's some transformation confusion, and next thing you know, he's staring at a naked Bulma, and Oolong pulled Bulma's clothes off as she was sleeping, which is pretty much rape, Oolong's a rapist, and I hate him, um, yeah, and then the bad guys get a bomb stuck to their hand. Not Team Rockety at all. Then they put it on the bus, and it blows up once they get on the bus, and the wheels of the bus go round and round. Anyway, and then Yopsha shoots their bus with a bazooka. Because they. He just assumes they'll survive. Uh, and yeah, Goku and Yamcha fight again, Goku wins because Yamcha chipped a tooth and he's like, oh, I can't, like, nobody will love me now, and then he runs off, and then he hands him a car later in the episode, and that's kind of where it's left off, I got some of my teeth, probably popcorn, um, let's see, Bulma and Yamcha were really made for each other, they're both like, really only obsessed with finding love and that's they're just very greedy like and I, I I understand like 
humans, we all just, like, really want to be loved, and, like, the ultimate epitome of that is finding your, uh, other, and, um, I, I guess I can get it, uh, I, I, everyone remembers before they had someone, uh, so, I guess they remember what Yamcha went through, or is going through, uh, cause I don't think he ever actually gets with anyone, uh, which is a shame, cause him and Bulma are kinda made for each other, but you know, Vegeta, he's that, uh, he, he gonna steal your girl, uh, he's that type of man, uh, so yeah, Yamcha, he, I, I, I can see, like, him and Bulma's idealism, uh, it's obviously much more exaggerated, uh, also, uh, I like, I like just having the house to myself and watching some Dragon Ball. Uh, I don't get time to myself as much anymore, so it's, you know, nice. Uh, I look terrible. Uh. Uh. I'm gonna give this episode 3 out of 5. That's probably gonna be it. See you on the next one. <clears throat> so, uh, last night I passed out during my little DB marathon, but, uh, I, I thought I'd watch episode 7, I believe it were on, uh, before, uh, this morning, before I started my day. But, uh, yeah, this episode, I'm gonna try to get as good as lighting as I can, which is kinda hard. Uh, but it's whatever. Basically, episode starts off, there's a good joke in there with Pilaf's gang. Uh, that's all we see of them in this episode. I feel, again, Team Rocket, they're gonna show up a little bit in each episode. Uh, and then our squad gets to Fire Mountain, and it's a mountain with a bunch of fire on it. It's, I don't know how it got that name. Um, was it called Fire Mountain before it was lit with fire? I don't, what was it called before that? So many questions. And then we meet Chi-Chi. Another main character that we'll know for so long, and she's running away from a giant T-Rex. Uh, not something that uncommon in Dragon Ball. And she throws this thing on her head at it, and it chops its head off, and then she hits it with like a laser beam, and it blows up. Laser beams, T-Rexes. Uh, a little five-year-old girl killed a T-Rex with a laser beam. That is... I wonder how Goku uh, became afraid of her. Um, anyway, uh, and then Yamcha, he's, you know, he runs into her. And he finds her so dangerous, he's like, psh, knocks her out. Um, don't, don't, don't do that, Yamcha. Just don't do that. Um, because after that, the gang tries to go by the base of the mountain, they meet Ox King, uh, Goku tries to fight him, and it doesn't really work out, and then, through conversation, he finds out that, uh, Ox King was actually trained by Master Roshi, as was, uh, Grandpa Gohan, and he basically wants to extinguish the fire that's on this mountain and he asks Goku to go on a search for Master Roshi because he has a tool that will inevitably uh, just block out the fire. Um, and he also wants him to find Chi Chi who he sent on the mission also. So Goku goes on the mission and then uh, mm, doesn't go too well. Um, first he meets Chi Chi uh, which is like a meeting, uh, they're already talking about marriage, and oh my god, it's, it's, uh, and obviously, I don't think Akira Toriyama, when he was making the scene, like, knew what would transpire, but, uh, it's, it's just kinda cool to see, you know, uh, I remember playing Kijichi in Budokai Tenkaichi 3, um, 
We never, I don't think I've ever played as Ox King. That's kind of a bummer. But we've played as like all these other uh, characters who can't fly and are pretty weak. Uh, it's whatever. Uh, I guess he'd be hard to control. Uh, that's, that has nothing to do with the episode. Chi Chi and Goku, they have some fun banter. They get to Kame House and the episode ends. And meanwhile, Yamcha is trying to, you know, save his ass. And we get the first tail pull of that episode. Uh, which obviously makes a person with a tail, aka a Saiyan, uh, very, uh, immobile. Let's just say. It's a weakness. Um, although we don't see it much in DBZ. Like, that's how they could have defeated Broly. Just a yank on his tail, and then boom. Uh, but with that being said, um, I think that's about all I want to cover in this episode. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm liking what I'm seeing so far. A lot of main characters just get introduced, man. It's crazy. Uh, with that being said, I'll give this episode a 3 out of 5. Uh, that being said, I'll see you guys on episode 8 later. Alright, we got episode 8, Dragon Ball Season 1. Um, uh, might, uh, cut a couple of these back-to-back -back real quick, but, um, yeah, this is episode 8, which is titled The Kamehameha Wave, uh, The Kamehameha Wave. Um, and yeah, um, a lot of, like, so, so many revelations that are coming to fruition with me. First off, uh, Chi-Chi and Goku, uh, they land on Roshi's Island, uh, Chi Chi doesn't think that's Roshi, so she's like, eh, I don't believe him. So I'm just gonna throw my tomahawk, uh, head thing at him, and if it, and then, uh, he'll dodge it if he's Roshi. And if it's not Roshi, I'm a fucking murderer. Um, so yeah, Roshi kind of just turns and blocks it rather than dodging, and it just hits him in the head, but doesn't kill him. Uh, so... I don't know, why didn't you dodge? Um, he's like, I know one's gonna dodge that that fast, you know, I, I think by your strength level you should have been able to dodge that, but, uh, not the point. Uh, they convince Roshi to come, uh, because he can't find the fan, because he lost it or threw it away, um, but his one condition is he gets to take Bulma out on a date, and isn't Bulma's like 15, I'm sorry, I'm not like okay with that, um, yeah, but they arrive back at Fire Mountain, Roshi rode this like weird turtle thing, he has all these animal friends I didn't even know about, Roshi lands back, uh, at Fire Mountain, they, he rejoices with Ox King, Ox King, um, he's surprised Ox King can't put it out, um, they also reference that he's immortal, or can't age at least. But, uh, the one thing, like, with Ox King, um, he references that why didn't Ox King put out, can Ox King use key? Um, could he ever have? That's, uh, confusing to me, but, um, uh, and so after that, um, he wants to make sure he gets the deal with Bulma before he puts out the fire, and he makes a pinky swear, and, um, after that, he shoots a Kamehameha wave. Well, first he does the big Hulk out thing, which I've seen him do a couple times. Um, this is the origin. Um, we get to see him at full power, and he's buff and all that. Uh, he shoots a Kamehameha wave at the castle, uh, and then it's the morning. It turns into morning somehow, and it's like I didn't like. I was at first. I was like, um, what? Well, I don't see how shooting key at that would put out a fire I'm not like I don't know the science of key but I don't think that's how it works um but no he just shot a Kamehameha wave at it and he blew the castle up like I didn't know that would happen I was like whoa what like and like he's just like oh my bad and Ox King's still like thankful well you put out the fire so eh I'll just get a new home could have destroyed the Dragon Balls but whatever uh Dragon Ball survived they looked at the wreckage, found Dragon Ball, they got one to go. So, eight episodes, seven Dragon Balls, and we're about a Dragon Ball an episode. Um, after that, um, 
what happened was kind of crazy. Uh, Goku says, hey, I want to learn the Kamei Wave. So, Roshi's like, eh, that'll probably take you like 50 years. Um, which I guess that's how long it takes to learn key and all that shit for a normal person. I just got... When I'm 68 from now, um, I'll get to shoot a Kamei Wave if I start now. Uh, so, Goku, in turn, just kind of turns around and shoots a Kamei Wave... He knows how to do that, I guess, is off. And so many... I don't understand how he's able to do that right away. Just watching doesn't mean you understand how key works, but, um... He's not the first person to just see a Kamei wave and be like, Oh, let me try that, and it worked for him. Uh, so, yeah, I guess... Mm, uh, for his first Kamei wave, it's so... <gasps> That's the... My little baby's growing up. Um, after that, um, basically, we... More sex jokes. Oolong replaces Bulma to pretend to be her for the date. And he's like, well, fuck Bulma. And, try, and is all perverted. And show Master Roshi's Bulma's boobs. Although he didn't see those. So I don't know how he... Maybe he just guesstimated. Um, anyway, um... Let's not talk about Bulma's boobs. Uh, I'll give this episode a th 4 out of 5. Fuck it, I don't really care. Um, just because, you know, Kamei waves and shit, man. It's good to see them. Uh, and I, I, I love Roshi. Roshi's so fucking awesome. He really is. But uh, I love that he's like so weak and yet so strong. But um, I think that'll be it. Uh, I'll see you guys on episode 9. Alright, that was um, episode something or other called... Uh, don't know. Um, let's see. Unique episode, gang stops for gas and gang um, gets mm, assaulted by rabbit uh, gang. Yeah, it was... um. Okay, first off, uh, Yamcha, he's following the crew... Has been for a while now. Um, Bulma and the others arrive in town. Um, she is still wearing the stupid bunny outfit because stupidness. And why she ever put on the ears, you don't need to do that. But she did anyway. And now she's mistaken for a rabbit gang. A gang that is just wears rabbit ears. And um, I don't even know. Uh, <sighs> oh god, um, uh, so, she's in the town, the town thinks she's part of this gang, uh, it's a very peaceful, quiet town, um, and then the actual gang members arrive, and they're going like, yes, mm, mm, maybe, yes, maybe, mm -hmm. uh, the, their voice, or one of their voices is just great, um, so Goku beats him up, they call their boss, and their boss arrives, and it's a fucking rabbit. A talking, human-sized rabbit. And, um, if he touches you, you turn into a carrot. A full-sized rabbit, and if he touches you, you turn into a human. So yeah, um, uh, Poor and Yamcha, they saved the day because Bulma touched the rabbit, so she had to be saved. Um, they managed to get her back into a human. Uh, they fought Rabbit Guy for the power pole. It was kind of like the solution for that. Um, yeah, and so Goku um, is like, oh, I'll get rid of him and puts him on the moon. Literally. Power Bowl can go to the moon, I guess. I didn't know the Power Bowl was that long. Apparently, it can go to the moon. The fucking moon. And I know Piccolo blew that shit up, so that means Piccolo killed some people when he did that. Uh, not that Akira Toriyama remembered. Um, what can you do, though? So, yeah, this episode was, um, interesting. A nice little thing. Um... I do, I do like it just whatever 
we get a, a town or something that's like exclusive to an episode. I really like that, and not just Dragon Ball, but other shows. Um, usually I like the town to have like a character or two, um, but in Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, when that happens, uh, like when Gohan ran to the orphanage, kids, um, or um, Avatar The Last Airbender, this kind of happens. I really like it. Um, that being said, it was kind of fillery, um, I didn't really like the rabbit people all that much, uh, so I'm gonna give this episode 3 out of 5, um, I think that should be it, yeah, mm. yeah, see you next episode. Just gonna cut this one real fast, basically, uh... The the gang, they, uh, they got one Dragon Ball to go. They go in General Pilaf's direction, because he obviously has the last one. Um, their car gets hit by his bazooka. Yeah. Uh, Shu, I guess who was an inner badass, uh, snaps the Dragon Balls, ports back, and turns out Goku still has his four-star ball that was separate. And so... Pilaf, I guess, has a dragon radar, which I didn't even know. They they see that Goku and the gang are coming back. They got a ride from Yamcha, who is over trying to overcome his fear of women. And uh, uh, they basically are just infiltrating the castle. Uh, at one point, there because the castle has traps and whatnot. Because when you're an evil dictator, you gotta have a big ass castle full of traps. Where the hell he got the money for this shit, I don't know. I don't understand, like, what Pilaf wants. He has a giant castle that he just somehow obtained. Uh, but, whatever. Uh, he just likes bossing people around that much that he's gotta make it his career. You know, kinda, kinda already is. Uh, does he have a career? Not really. Uh, but, you know what I mean. So, they go into the castle, there are these traps, there's a bunch of bats, and Bulma, like, is like, oh, Yamcha, and Yamcha just fucking pushes her off, and she's like, what the fuck was that for? He's like, I thought you were a bat, and it was funny. And, uh, after that, uh, there's a dead end, and then the wall caves in, and they're just stuck in a big little tiny square, and that's how the episode ends. I'm gonna give this episode three out of five. It was a good episode, uh, where I'm sure this little peel-off thing will make a quick little th rivalry, or not rivalry, but like quick little, I don't know, saga, and I just want Goku to go back, take Master Roshi up for the word, for his word, go back on the island, become a student, World Martial Arts Tournament, Krillin, King Piccolo, I'm waiting for all you things to happen, Tien Shin Ha, where are you? <sighs> but we'll get there. Um, I'm enjoying what we got so far, though. Uh, yeah. Later. Shenron has risen! Uh, but we'll get into that. This episode, we got the gang. They're still in Pilaf's castle. Um, basically, first off, he has these giant arm things, and he could have just grabbed them one by one and got the Dragon Ball that way. Uh, but Pilaf is very stupid. Um, I will get into that. But, uh, and then he, he takes Bulma, and he's, he gives her the treatment, and it's so cringy. He, he blows a kiss at her, and it's just... And how can, it was followed up by, like, middle fingers, and, like, how can the show be so child-friendly and then so not... Uh, um, and then, uh, what happened? Um, she throws her back in and just hits him with sleeping gas. Why didn't she just do that to begin with? Uh, I don't know. Uh, they grab Goku's Dragon Ball. Uh, they have all seven. Um, and then bef they're on their way outside. And then they run in to get Goku and the gang because they forgot to shut the trap door. Uh, the, there's a little skirmishing thing, and then they run into a giant pinball machine, which Pilaf has constructed in all his spare time with all his money. And then, um, 
He just leads them back to the trap door, so they're just stuck there, so I guess we just kind of wasted time. Uh, Goku blasts a Kamehameha wave through the wall. It's just big enough for, like, poor to get out there. And him and Oolong are going to take the Dragon Ball and hopefully stop him. But before they do that, Pilaf summons Shenron and the episode ends. And Shenron looks a little bit like, I don't know, like, he doesn't... Because I've seen Shenron, he doesn't look like uh how the first time he was summoned he how he looks then but um i don't like pilaf i'm starting to realize um i don't find him all that entertaining um as a team rocket background character i don't mind his comedy works a little bit but he's at the front thing like this and I have to see him for so long, I'm just like, no, 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 no. I don't enjoy him as a character, but, uh, that's, and all the characters, really, like, even Goku, Bulma, they're, they're, they both are, like, have such low qualities that I'm, like, finding it, so far, only Roshi and his perversion and hitting on a 15-year-old that's, or 14, I don't know the exact. So far, he's the most justified character. Um, or at least the most just, like, justifiable enough that I like. But yeah, uh, it, the episode itself wasn't that bad. It was, it was pretty good. Mm, we did summon Shenron for the first time. And had a special, um... I didn't know that Pilaf was the first one on the show to summon Shenron. That's very interesting. So, with that being said, I think I'll give this episode a 3 out of 5. And, uh, yeah, that should be it. I'll see you guys on the next one. Blah. Alright, what's up, guys? Um, I don't even know what episode we're on. Uh, I'm just gonna run through these real quick. Um, just, uh, first off, Shenron was summoned first time ever in the series. Not gonna lie, it was kind of anticlimactic. It was his older design, you know, it's not as polished. The summoning wasn't even as epic as it is uh, later on in the series, you know. And I know animation gets better, but it was just, eh. And of course, the wish that was granted was, eh. There were certain ways you could have handled that, and I know we just had a kind of bullshit wish. So, use it for comedy, but this... This show has enough bad sex jokes that we didn't need that. Maybe that shit in Japan is just funnier because it's a different culture and different... Uh, they have a different pulse when it comes to laughing. Or a different funny bone. But, um, yeah. Uh, the gang, uh, after the... Oolong just jumps in and takes the wish and then they get chased. They get thrown in prison. And then Goku, uh, he learns it's full moon, he's saying, oh, don't look at the full moon, guys. A monster comes out on that night, and through deductive reasoning, uh, the gang kind of just learns, oh, shit, he's kind of the monster he's talking about. And then Bulma, the dumbass that she is, she's like, don't look at the full moon, it's right above you, and she points at the shit. And then Goku looks at it. And... Uh, and the episode ends just as he's turning into a great ape. Why does the episode always fucking end? Like, they give the, like, big cool part, but it's, like, the big cool part you have to, like... It's... It, you When you get to the next episode is when it's actually fleshed out. Um, yeah, the Azaru form, it is here. Uh, I thought this was late in the series when this moment happened, but no, we are... 12 episodes in, and that's, like, when a normal anime ends, but, um, yeah, that's, ah, uh, and I believe after this is when we finally get to Roshi and all that, so, very excited for that, very excited, uh, seeing Shenron, seeing the Azaru form, I think that gives this episode a push, but it's like, eh, I don't fucking, I don't fucking like Pilaf's gang and their comedy, I didn't like how they treated the wish, I think it could have been better, and I love Dragon Ball and all the shit in it, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna dick ride it just because of what it is, um, 
Because in the end, it's the storytelling that I care about the most. And even if it's a uh, the origin to a story I love, I'm not going to just say that the uh, storytelling is great. But um, yeah, I'll give this episode a 3 out of 5. It was good. You know, uh, important stuff happening. And I'm sure if this is the first time I watch it, I'll be like, what the fuck? Azaru dragons? Like, the supernatural shit would be in the air, but, um, there's not a moment in my life where I didn't know what Azaru was, and I didn't know who Shenron was, so. And this, like, I always knew the concept of the Dragon Ball was, like, once a year, it spreads across the earth. I knew all that, so. And I understand for other people. Um, but for me, it's like, I can't not know that. And that's the problem, like, with, like, uh, you know, playing a video game and, like, hearing shit on the internet and shit. Like, you learn about the story and you don't get to experience it the right way. But, uh, and it's unfortunate, but it's the way it is. Uh, I'm gonna go back to watching Dragon Ball later. Alright, so, in this episode, uh, what episode? 12? I don't fucking know. Um, basically, uh, I'm whispering. Uh, in this episode, Goku, he becomes the Azaru, he fucks some shit up, he destroys Pilaf's castle, uh, Pilaf comes back with, uh, a ship, basically, there's a lot of scurrying, everyone's running around trying to not get, uh, become Grandpa Gohan, I guess, <sighs> which, is, which is, like, the saddest irony ever, um, so... They shoot him with this giant plane. A lot of King Kong imagery in this episode. They had a little thing flying around him. Um, and Pilaf mentions it took him ten years to build the castle. I cannot imagine Pilaf building a fucking castle. I'm sorry. I don't know how that happened, but whatever. Uh, and then Goku also grabbed Bulma at one point. And just more King Kong imagery. But poor turned to a giant scissors and cut off his tail. That's pretty trippy. Um, so yeah, uh, they wake up. Uh, his tail's gone. He's has to deal with that now. Um, also, what else? Um, they go their separate ways because you know we got a year to with the Dragon Balls. So Goku's gonna go to Master Roshi's. Yamcha and Bulma kind of get together, and it's like a real touching moment. Uh, she gives him the Dragon Radar. I really enjoyed this episode. It it was a nice um build up. I know like twelve episodes, that's usually like a nice little saga right there. So yeah, I was I was very satisfied. Um I The Legend of Goku. Uh yeah, just see the Zaru form, seeing that. Uh and I I just like the the adventure of it all. Um, I'm going to give this episode a 4 out of 5. I really enjoyed it. And sorry if I'm just kind of like running through the episodes a little bit. But uh, what can you do? Alright. That should be it. Later. So Krillin was introduced. Um, I might take a little bit more time on this one. Get some good uh, reflection of, you know, past events. Um... One, I am a sucker for student-teacher uh, relationships and stories, um, and I already love this little dynamic that we got with Goku and Krillin, or Krillin, uh, with Master Roshi. I believe that's how you pronounce Krillin's actual name. Uh, but I'm not calling Goku Son Goku or Kakaroto anytime soon, so... Yeah, uh, in this episode, Goku, he stops by his house, uh, we get to see, uh, that, he goes to Master Roshi's, and Master Roshi's like, I don't, there's like 50 people living in my house at a time, and they just come in and out, you know, um, and it's only gonna get worse, uh, he, little does he know that it's some, someone, uh, one of his students is about to live there with his wife and kid in the future, but, um, we're, 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 that's too far away. But first, um, Bulma and Yamcha and them, they're in a jungle, they're in a fucking desert, they're just 
having their own little adventures. Um, I don't know if that's leading anywhere. But meanwhile, Goku, um, he is trying to, you know, just get to the training, but Master Roshi's like, hmm, what, how can I use this kid to get girls? And he's such a lonely fuck on his island, he's like, just, just bring a girl here. And Goku, he retrieves this giant, uh... Just, just just giant of a woman and then he recruits a mermaid <laughs> he tries with the mermaid he's like maybe just the top half and then you know T Johnny Bravo's it and she hits him and you know swims away and this man said there's something fishy about her fucking puns uh gotta love the dub um after that Korean arrives uh he's He's a big fucking douche. Um, he just is like little. <laughs> um, it's not the crew and I know. Everyone just fucking like annoying in this. Uh, I don't want to say annoying, but even like Goku, he's such a little fuck. Uh, and of course, so Krillin, who's like a little less likable than Goku. Um, obviously, he's gonna be the biggest fucking world. The only one I really like is Master Roshi. Um, he's the only character that I'm like, oh yeah, I just fucking love you. Um, and, uh, even if, even this episode, he's like, and Krillin, he like persuades Master Roshi to teach him with fucking porno mags. Uh, who has porno mags anymore? You're jacking off like a goddamn pilgrim. Uh, if you didn't get that reference, it's okay. Um, so yeah, I really love this angle with the show. And with the whole, I, I want to focus off Pilaf, um, and I like, uh, that we are away from the Dragon Balls, um, but we're still, like, retaining the show. Because, in the end, it's just about, uh, the whole, like, obtaining Dragon Balls, it's about the adventure. And so, as long as the adventure continues, uh, the show will continue. Um, and even now, um, now, now, um... It's it's still going on, technically, uh, but obviously with a very different story. Uh, that being said, I'll give, give this episode a 4 out of 5. Uh, Goku, he has his rival, uh, and he's like on, they're like on the same level, which is just ridiculous. Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, that should be it. Um, g interesting episode. Uh, I'll see you guys on the next one. Alright, I believe this is episode 15. This is Launch's whole episode. Uh, I have been slacking on my Dragon Ball. Uh, I'm sorry. It, I mean, it's like, it, for you it hasn't been a while, but for me it's been a while. Uh, yeah, Launch is coming to the picture. Goku and Krillin have to find a girl. And Launch, um, the character who is so important that Toriyama forgot her. Jesus Christ, she has more time and attention in this episode than all of Z. All of Z, she kind of just got, you know, um, dismissed. So, and she's, you know, I know about her character, and, but, really, this is, like, I'm being introduced to her, because it's like, I don't know all that much about her. And now that I get to see her, and see her little sneeze sling in action, she, the blonde launch, she's a fucking murderer. She's like derailing trains, she's shooting up cops, like she's murdering people. I didn't know it was like that. Like holy shit. Um, she also reminded me of Yang from Ruby a little bit. Maybe just cause she was blonde and in short shorts and hanging out at bars and shit and kicking people and punching people. But uh, yeah. After she sneezes again, turn into blue launch, or blue haired launch. Goku and Krillin find her, they bring her back. Krillin, he's just, he's, I don't know, him and this, this new version of Dragon Ball, you know it's the original, uh, he's so, he's like a evil Charlie Brown, he's, ugh, then his voice actor, he's like this little schemey sleazeball, and then Master Roshi's just trying to fucking have sex with women, that's like probably... 10% of how old he is because who knows how old Master Roshi is in all honesty uh yeah and so basically there's like most 
once the launch gets to the island, it's mostly comedy. I, I just, this isn't as, um, I feel a little less weird with this kind of comedy. Because I feel like launch isn't fucking 15, 16 or however old Bulma was. But, um, yeah. Uh, then the episode kind of ends there. Very, very good episode. Launch as a character, it's gonna be interesting to see where she goes. Um, I like her. She's, um, she's, a uh, quite the badass lady. Um, but yeah. Uh, I'll give this episode... Three, four out of five? Fuck it, I don't really... Oh, who cares? Um... Yeah, so... Hope you guys are enjoying these reactions. Uh, I'll see you for episode 16. Uh, take care. We're on episode 16. Um... Yeah, weird way to film. Uh... This is what you do when you're laying in bed all day recovering. Um, in this episode, basically, um, I actually remember this episode. I think I saw this, one of the few episodes of Dragon Ball I saw as a child. And I thought it was amazing. Uh, I, I do love the concept of this episode where Master Oshi basically takes a rock and he th writes the Kame symbol on it and he throws it out into the forest and just tells them the first one to get it will receive food between Goku and Krillin. And Goku and Krillin, their rivalry is just so great with them and their, and I know the fucking blue orange bricks, people fucking hate them. Um, I don't have a lot of options. Uh, I'll, I'll pull that back. It makes for a good, I don't know. So, yeah, oh god. Got me worrying. Um, so, yeah, uh, and basically, Krillin tries to cheat. He gets a fake one. Master Oshi sees it's fake. I love that. He tricks Goku out of getting the stone by kind of just being like, oh, I'll take, I'll, dude, he talks him out of it. And then, um, he like, Challenge Goku to a fight. Goku kind of, you know, a little scuffle. He wins. But, uh, Krillin, through one way or another, throwing fake stones and whatnot, he gets the stone Master Yoshi, and he wins, and he gets to eat. And the ultimate joke is, uh, the food was made by a poisonous fish that Launch made, and that's how the episode ends. Uh, pr pretty... I actually really love just like that whole scenario and concept. It's and I just love this whole the rivalry, the student teacher relationships. I love that kind of stuff. Um that being said, um I will give this episode a four out of five. Great episode. We are more than half I believe, no, I think we're at the halfway point, uh, through season one. Oh, I'm so, I'm gonna be excited to finish this, um, get my review out, hopefully move on to season two, as well as some other anime. Uh, I need to get back on my anime train. Uh, with that being said, uh, have a good one. I love you guys. With that, I leave you. Alright, episode 19, I believe, of Dragon Ball, um, thank you for watching, uh, the series, uh, is at a good place right now, um, basically, if my voice, by the way, is fucked, I am sorry for that, but, um, the, the series is at a good place right now, um, the beginning of the first world tournament, um, we get a little bit more training with Goku, Crow, and and, uh, Master Roshi, and Master Roshi basically, I guess, doesn't, like, I know he knows how to fight, like, and I don't know why he's, like, 
he's just kind of lazy, I guess. I noticed that's a trend in Dragon Ball is the masters are always like, don't want to teach anyone ever, but um, it's whatever. But uh, in this episode, you know, Goku, Krillin finally moved that giant rock, and then Roshi's like, I don't know what else to do with you. Uh, heavier shells, fuck it. Um, so that's what he ends up doing, and after that, what happens, um, we get some more Yamcha, he's gonna be in the tournament, he has his own little cool fighting section, he's going at it pretty hard. Um, Yamcha, you know, for right now he's pretty likable. Like, um, I know in DBZ he's a very written off character, but um, I know he's at least a little bit more than that, and I'm seeing it here. Uh, then we got a reunion with the gang, uh, Yamcha, like, saves Bulma. Like, think how much the series would have changed if she would have died right there. Uh, no trunks, um, the future would have been, so Yamcha saved everyone when he saved her from that car crash in this episode. Um, favorite moment in this episode, um, the gang... Goku, Crow, and Roshi, they're on this, um, airplane, and when they descend, they meet up with Bulma, poor Oolong, it's a very nice little reunion, and then Goku puts on the, his gi, the orange gi with the Kame symbol on the front for the very first time. The colors are a little bit, you know, not what they're gonna be in the future, but that's alright. Um, you know, it's just a good moment, Crow's wearing one too, um, I, I very much enjoyed that, and it just, uh, I needed just kind of just a nice, warm-hearted show, um, and I, I need to get these fucking episodes done, um, because I need to move on to more anime and more, I need to finish this fucking show that's gonna take, I knew, I knew this would happen, but, um, and if you're, if anyone's watching and is remotely interested in hearing my first reactions for this show I'm pretty passionate about, uh, thank you. Um, with that, I give this episode a 4 out of 5. Thank you for watching. As always, uh, this episode ends. The, the name of this episode implies the tournament's beginning this time around, but that doesn't happen really till next time. But, um, I will see you guys then, uh, in the next episode. Thank you for watching, as always. And with that, I leave you. Boom! Alright, and we are reviewing episode 20. Um, I'm trying to find a good place to sit. Uh, this episode... Um, I, we're now starting the tournament, we're in the preliminary rounds, and yeah, it's basically because there's like a hundred people in this, over, like a hundred and thirty or some shit people in this tournament, and they gotta weed that down to like fucking eight or something, um, yeah, and later tournaments I think have like sixteen or something, because you know, we have, a, we have a much bigger cast in those, so we have more to work with. Um... So in this episode, we basically, uh, it, it's, I've seen this before, this happens like with every world tournament, there's like, all these people and then Goku and his fucking friends just gotta just whip them in like one punch, and that's what they do here, Krillin, Yamcha, Goku, they're just knocking these people out left and right, and um, I'm assuming the, when we're gonna, cause I don't know who, I don't know who's gonna win this fucking tournament. This is first reactions, I don't know. Uh, I don't know if they're gonna introduce Tien, if they're gonna, I know, uh, Goku, uh, eventually fights Roshi, uh, like, this is stuff that's been spoiled to me, but, um, yeah, I, this, this episode didn't really need to happen, it was just kinda, one interesting thing um, they mentioned was Goku and Krillin, they don't know how to fight. Uh, they're just a lot stronger and faster than everyone else. And Goku picks a fighting stance and he goes with, like, fucking this. And the, and the guy he was fighting, who was an actual martial arts person, was like, what the fuck? He's, like, completely open. I like when Dragon Ball actually talks about... Because, you know, they make it, like, martial arts. But their martial arts is, like, Naruto's ninja. It, some, it doesn't actually have to do a lot with martial arts. So I like when they actually incorporate that stuff. But in the end, this episode, it was just... I've seen this shit before. Even when Goku was a kid, he was miles above his competition and could just fuck them up in one hit. 
Um, and so yeah, this episode, we could have just, this could have been like a five minute flash forward, and I think I would have been okay. Yamcha had a cool battle with, um, uh, this guy that kind of looked like a wolf, and probably the biggest thing, Krillin, he met up with the people from where he's from, and he basically just kind of whooped their ass, and I guess that's his backstory fulfilled, um, and I don't know if we'll be seeing them ever again, but it's like, hey, uh, don't have to worry about that anymore. Uh, I I'm really interested to see how Krillin grows, because, you know, he's slowly becoming likable. Um, with that, uh, I give this episode like a 6 out of 10, 3 out of 5, I don't fucking know. Um, yeah, uh, t t hope you guys, uh, if you're watching alongside me, like the episode. Hope you enjoyed my first reaction. I might watch another one up here in a second. Um, with that, thank you for watching. With that, I leave you. Episode 21, Dragon Ball. I gotta find them all. Dun, 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 dun. Um, again, my voice is, this was not the night to decide to do a lot of talking videos. But, um, yeah, in this up, I mean, we gotta get the shit done, so. Uh, whenever YouTubers are like, oh, my voice, like, it hurts, and I was like, it kind of ruins the video, but at the same time, these people gotta make videos all the fucking time, otherwise, if the video doesn't come out, it, it's because that one day your voice was fucked up. So, um, my voice isn't fucked up to the point where I don't think I should not be making a video. It just hurts. I don't think it's... You let me know if it sounds terrible. Um... So yeah, episode 21, 21 is my favorite number, and this was uh, a very cringe-worthy episode. Um, where to even start? Uh, we basically just just got the first match, really, of this tournament. This tournament, we got all the brackets mixed up. I believe this is going to be uh, Goku versus Master Roshi. Master Roshi as Jackie Chun. Um, didn't even hide that that was Master Oshi one bit. Um, he did Master Oshi things. He hit on a chick and he sounds just like him. And he went AWOL on Bulma and them. The second, the second I was like, um, uh, that, uh, Master Oshi, like, kept going away from the group and went missing. I was like, okay, so he's gonna be in the tournament. Uh, and that's probably gonna be the finals, uh, Roshi and Goku. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm trying to remember the break. I know Krillin and Goku are, like, on opposite sides, so it could be Krillin and Goku, or Roshi and Goku. I know a lot of you probably have fucking seen this show multiple times, even, and are just like, oh my god, he doesn't know this, and he calls himself a Dragon Ball fan. That's why you're fucking doing this! Uh, we, that's why we're here. Um, so I can feel better about myself, but, um, if there, there are downsides to Dragon Ball, and I think it's comedy, um, it's just not for me, uh, because there's a lot of really just cringeworthy stuff like this, and the, uh, the kind of fan service Bulma stuff, um, that was in the last episode, but in this episode we got, uh, this one character known as Bacterion. And basically, he's just a big fucking dude who smells, and that's why he's, you know, beating people, because they can't fucking smell him without fucking gagging. And Goku at one point points out that Krillin doesn't have a nose, and I thought he was actually going to beat him, because he realized, oh my god, I don't have a nose, I can fight him now. And I remember that being like in a Pokemon episode or something, where someone didn't have a nose, and that actually worked to their benefit. Uh, but thankfully that didn't happen here. Um, uh, I could, Grillin can smell. I think they're just making fun of the fact that he doesn't have a nose. Um, but yeah, there's some gross, there was farting, there was just, it ended with Krillin farting in his fucking face. It was really just cringeworthy, and I don't even fucking want to talk about it in all honesty. I don't, I don't, uh, I don't like that type of humor, it just feels so cringy and fucking, uh, just, just very childish and just, like, uh, really, 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 um, 
But yeah, that's my thoughts on this episode. I'll give it a 2 out of 5 if, if fuck scores. Um, yeah, I don't know. These are just my little reaction thingies, guys. Um, and yeah, not this episode I could have done without. Um, yeah. So yeah, episode 22 coming up. Thank you for watching. Episode 22, Dragon Ball Season 1, gotta find them all, um, okay, uh, just watched the episode, um, basically, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm excited we're actually getting through some of these, um, I'm, I'm gonna be very excited to finish this motherfucking season and get out my motherfucking review with all these motherfucking snakes on this motherfucking plane, um, Everything's cooler with the F word, I believe. Um, in this episode, 22, we got um, two fights. The first one, Yamcha um, and uh, Jackie Chan. Jackie Chan, later in the episode, is revealed to be Master Roshi, although it's pretty obvious at this point. Wasn't a cool uh, kind of reveal or anything. It was just kind of... I kind of knew you assumed it at this point. And Yamcha... We'll get to that, but he fights Roshi. Roshi, he, he's just dodging all of his punches. I, like, I'm, I don't know where the power levels are right now, so I didn't think Master Roshi would be so far ahead of him. But, yeah, Master Roshi, like, he just dodged all of his shit, and then he just did the, uh, whenever they, like, control the wind, just by, like, whew, And he just sends them flying and do a ring out, and that's it. Um, didn't use any key or anything. I hope in the... Goku Roshi fight, there will be some key thrown. Um, after that, you know, Yamcha, he's not that beat up about it. He's, he's, you know, taking it how he should. Um, but the thing following that is he's trying to figure out who this is, this guy. And he's like, basically like, he, he's like, oh, I don't know who it is. And he's like, man, I wish I was smarter. And it always, it's like he's dissing himself. At first he thinks he's a relative of Roshi, then he realizes by the end of the, so the end of the episode it's Roshi. The next fight is between Nam and this other girl. I don't know the girl's name. Uh, and Nam was a character I played in one of the Budokai Tenkaichi games. Um, I believe the third one. I don't know if he's in the second one. I don't have the game anymore, but uh, I did, and I remember playing as someone. I was just like very intrigued. Because I knew nothing about this guy before I played that game. And, you know, in the game, uh, I kind of, there's like little bios that kind of tell you a backstory, and I got the backstory there. And we've seen this character before, at least I have in DBZ. They reuse some stuff. He has a village, and it's poor, and they need money. Oob. Uh, there are characters like this. Uh, and they're always at the World Tournament. But it's believable, and it gives you this kind of sad story, and, you know, makes him the ultimate underdog to the point where, you know, you want him to win almost as much as Goku or Krillin or Roshi. Uh, definitely not, not, not Yamcha, though. Um, what I believe is going to happen, Goku is going to probably, you know, fight him in the next round, and he's going to give him his money if he wins the tournament. And I believe that's what's going to happen. Um, at this point... Goku, uh, he basically, I'm trying to remember, not Goku, but Nam and this girl, they fight. Uh, Nam, you know, he's being respectful because she's a woman, and then, you know, they're having a clean, kind of normal fight, and then she undresses herself, and he gets nervous, and it almost costs him the match before he just uses, he closes his eyes and uses his senses and just kind of gives her a pat on the back of the neck. We have one female character in this fucking tournament, and she gets fucking naked, and she gets wiped out in one fucking hit. Um, and it's against a fucking Middle Eastern, almost racist, like, character. Like, I get it, like, Japan, Toriyama, I don't think he has a certain respect for uh, Middle Eastern culture or black culture, because he really hasn't shown it in his things. He's from a completely different world than I am. I'm in a completely different world than the Middle Eastern world, obviously. Uh, but 
there's still, I, when I look at Nam and just kind of hear his English voice actor that's a little bit too, I don't know, um, I don't know, and there's like jokes about his stomach grumbling and stuff like that, um, not that he's like, they're trying to be disrespectful with this character, but they're not, they're not being that respectful either. And so we have this kind of character who's that's depicting women wrong and a Middle Eastern character. And I don't really like how either of them are being depicted. Um, and that's just me. Um, you know, it's, 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 like, it's like 10 minutes, not even. So it's not a super big deal. Um, and Nam, Nam I'm a little bit more lenient towards because... They're, they're, in the end, they're trying to make him the underdog. They just don't really know how to go about it. And that's fine, in the end. I don't really care. Uh, but I don't necessarily like it. Um, and yeah, so Nam wins. Nam's gonna obviously fight Goku. Uh, and Goku will fight Roshi. Roshi will be Krillin. It's a pretty predictable tournament. Um, but that's obviously because I'm in this world where stuff gets fucking spoiled to you. And I knew all of this before I maybe even finished Dragon Ball Z. Like, I knew. I just see one picture of Goku fighting Roshi in, like, a trailer or some video online. And obviously I know they're going to fight in the world tournament. Um, that being said, thank you guys for watching. Um, that's what I thought of this episode. It was another just... I don't... Uh, as much as I love this tournament and just everything going on, I don't like what they did with these characters or or some of the comedy. Um, that being said, uh, with that, thank you for watching. Uh, and with that, I leave you. Boom. Episode 23. Um, we're coming up towards the end of the tournament. Uh, this is the last round in the quarterfinals. Uh, basically, they... Goku, the guy he's fighting, it's just a big fucking monster. Um, it's just a big random dinosaur creature. And you know, they gotta fill out a whole episode with this thing, so they try to make it seem like he's actually important. This dude, so they kind of postpone the match, uh, due to weather. In anime, it's like the rain is like fucking poisonous, I swear to god. Um, I don't know why, they're, they're always like... They're gonna stop a fucking, like, activity, like, a worldwide activity because it's starting to rain, really. Um, you can't fight in the rain, but, um, they postpone the match, they give this guy, he's coming in to get food, and the fight breaks out. Krillin's fucking friends, or people, are all fucking assholes, I guess, uh, base, because we've met, like, f five, six of them now, and they all seem like assholes. I can see how Krillin became himself, uh, at least we're talking about young Krillin. Uh, so, then we got this big fucking dude, uh, him and Goku are about to fight, they gotta postpone it because, you know, they, they fight outside the ring, it'll be against the rules, they fight in the ring, uh, this guy spits out this weird stuff that traps Goku, he throws him out of the ring, Luckily, the Flying Nimbus saves him. Uh, the Flying Nimbus then gets, you know, kind of like, can't use that anymore because it's an outside thing. Um, and then, uh, Goku miraculously grows his tail. Uh, and it's very sporadic, and he just kind of gets it. Um, and I didn't, I didn't know anything about this. He got that. I guess he has his tail again. Um, so they're gonna have to figure a way to cut that off again. And then after that, uh, what happened? Uh, the fight kind of ends. Once he grows his tail back, it reveals that he's really strong. Um, and the guy just kind of gives up. And we kind of built a character up. Like, an, we didn't actually build a character up. It's not like he got depth or like a backstory. He, we just, he went from big strong fucking monster to, oh, big strong fucking monster that gets a little bit more depth, and after that it was like, okay, now that you got that, he's just gonna give up. Goku couldn't just, you know, fight him, give him a couple hits with that new tail, uh, use a cool thing he learned, or something, something, something. Nope, he just surrenders. Episode ends, who gives a fuck? Uh, quarterfinals, yay! Um, from here on out, I think the tourna tournament should be pretty good, so I'm looking forward to that. 
um, no Yamcha, but we only got, you know, uh, Goku, like, I'd, I'd probably prefer Nam over Yamcha in the tournament, in all honesty, so, eh, can't complain, um, we got the char characters I don't really give a shit <coughs> about, they're out of the tournament, we can move on, I'll give this episode a 5 out of 10, I don't give a shit, uh, next episode. Alright, this episode, semi-finals, underway, Krillin, Roshi, Jackie Chung, um, Krillin and Jackie Chung, uh, basically this entire episode is just their fight, they actually have a pretty, actually really good fight, I actually really enjoyed it. I'm trying to figure out, like, a lot of Dragon Ball Z is trying to, you know, take the little beats and trying to put together who's stronger, so I think... Yamcha's kind of at the bottom, because he got one-headed by Jackie Chan. Uh, then Krillin, uh, to I think him and Orochi are on a pretty big scale, and I think Goku would have been just a little bit above Krillin, uh, and I think Nam would have even been above that, but since Goku, Deus Ex, uh, Deus Ex Machina, got his tail back, he's now like, uh, if not just below Roshi, he's right there with him. Um, I don't know who's gonna win the fight, though. Uh, but him and Krillin, they had a good fight. Uh, there was, like, a long comedy segment that was, like... Okay, this is the part of the series, first time ever, where we get... They go faster than what we can see. Um, so, and basically, they were, like, trying to explain this. Um, in order to try to explain this, they literally reenacted everything that happened within like a 30 second thing and they dragged that out for like how many minutes and I was laughing at how ridiculous it was but at first I was like, really? We really just did this? So I don't know, I don't really know how to feel about that. Um, Roshi, he uses the Kamehameha wave uh, to get out of a little predicament he was in. Krillin, I don't want to know where he got those panties but whatever. He pulled him out, kick Roshi, Roshi used Kamehameha Wave, get back in. Roshi still can't fly, but I don't think he'll ever learn how to fly. Um, and, I'm trying to think. Um, and Roshi, I really want to know how strong he was in his prime. Because, we see in the series that not fighting, you know, it really does affect you. Roshi's a little bit different because... He's not on the same scale as, like, a Gohan or Goku. Uh, I'm talking about DBZ here. But, it's like... Like, I want to know how strong he was in his prime. Like, he obviously must have lost some strength due to, you know, laziness. Um, so, and I know he, like, fountain of youth or whatever the hell happened there. And that might have affected things. Who knows? Um, and... I don't know if it was in this episode or the other episode, we learned how old Goku was, he's 12, Krillin I think is 13, they look younger, you could have fooled me, whatever, um, so Goku was 11 at the beginning of the show, I'm trying to think, uh, sure, let's go with that, um, and go on, go on when he was like 11 or however, whatever, I'm not gonna think about it, um, plot holes, man, uh, but we also, you know, when they were going super fast, they had a conversation for a little bit, and later in the show, though, the, the infamous five minutes, you know, obviously, I think, I, I watched the dub, I don't know what they said in the sub, but in this, they said they pretty much had a conversation at light, or not light speed, but at this super speed, so, later in the show, there's a lot of points where they talk, and obviously that would have lengthened the time. Maybe they're talking at fucking super speed, too, as little as whatever the fuck. I don't know. It's Dragon Ball Z. Let's, or Dragon Ball. Let's not overthink. I, we really... Dragon Ball has been analyzed to death, and I think there are other shows out there, other pieces of work that probably deserve it more, because I honestly, I honestly think Akira Toriyama, like, if he saw some of these plot holes people are, like, bitching about online, he's like, really, do you fucking care? Because I don't. Um, so, yeah, um, that, I was a, a little bit of a tangent there, but, um, 
Yeah, this episode, uh, Roshi just kind of won. He, like, kind of just, like, uh, eventually got the upper hand, then boom. Uh, pretty much just put Crow on, out on his ass, and that's okay. Um, I don't have any beef with that. Uh, they could have made Crow look a little bit better. Uh, Crow uh, this is... The gap between Goku and Kuroin is starting to lengthen, finally. But, um, you know, even while they were training, Goku was doing a little bit better always, so... Eh, it's not like he was... It's not... I don't think Kuroin was ever better than Goku, in all honesty, except maybe when they may first arrive at the islands or some other point in time. But, um, I really liked this episode. I thought they had a good fight. Uh, yeah, it was a really good episode. Seven... Strong 7, light 8 out of 10. Fuck it. Um, yeah. On to the next semifinal match. Later. Okay, so, second semifinal match. Uh, Goku fought Nam. Nam, uh, basically... You know, we get his backstory. First off, the fight just begins. Goku and Nam, you know, they have a good match. Nam, obviously, a very strong person. He's jumping super high. He hits this, like, aerial move that I saw him use in the game, and it was fucking, like, it was actually a pretty good move. And he does that in this, and basically Goku's down, but he gets back up. Uh, the match, I'm just running through the match real quick. Goku gets back up. His tail kind of gives him a little bit of an advantage. Um, they have a cool little fight in the air for a little bit. Goku, he, he's faster. He just is, and he's a little bit more powerful. That gives him the edge, he drops down when he's doing that move, Goku just kind of kicks him out of the ring, and that's that. Following the match, Nam, I really, like, I know I said I had some, like, because he seemed, how they were treating him seemed to be a little bit racist before. Um, I, it's, it's, it's whatever. Um, I, I feel like they, they've, they've made up for it, because in the end he's a cool character and they're trying to just, be nice to the guy. Um, basically, he shakes Goku's hands, he's respectful, he's not throwing a tantrum at all. Um, and then Roshi helps him out. He reveals that he's Roshi, finally. Um, and then he makes Nam uh, get in the crowd and pretend to be Roshi's, and he points out to Yamcha, and he's like, Roshi's right over there! And it's just fucking Nam with his dark skin, and he just has Roshi's glasses and beard. Whatever. Whatever. I, that's, the kind, that's the kind of comedy I like, so I like that. Following that, uh, what happened? Uh, well, before that, actually, uh, Roshi gave him a capsule. He's like, you can fill this up with whatever you want. And he takes him just to a well outside of the tournament, and he's like, hey, water's abundant here. Just take whatever you want. And when Nam was, like, you know, like, not taking the food early, I was like, dude, you have, you can probably get enough scraps to at least do something. And that's pretty much what he does. I don't think he's getting the prize money. I don't know who's going to get the prize money. Uh, I assume maybe they'll w w Goku or Roshi will win it, and then Launch will take it. That's my guess, uh, personally. Uh, but Roshi does say, I don't want Goku uh, or Krillin to win, because if they win, they'll, be, they'll kind of become arrogant a little bit. Uh, once They'll think of themselves as the best. And once you're the best, you don't... Uh, really keep striving forward uh, and I've seen that happen that would I love that like that happens in real life and not even with fighters but with like just successful people they'll get what they earned and they'll may not do new things they'll just kind of keep things steady and but they won't they won't be going at it like they were before and so I really like that and I think he was talking a little bit about himself because he was the best and now he's you know just kind of well, just going along, and I think, I think even his laziness, even he's like a little like, yeah, I really just wish I wasn't doing this, like, being a little bit lazy, I wish I was still this cool fighter rising up, but, um, and I, this tournament's giving me a, that respect that I wanted for Roshi, because I've, Roshi, like, he's been a character I always enjoyed, but I've always, was like, I need to learn more about you, and DBZ, amazing but he's he's a background character in that show so to finally see him on the forefront and actually getting the cool moments seeing the introspective part of him I really enjoy he's still grabbing unconscious chicks asses after fights whatever 
I'll live with it. Meh. Um, but as far as, you know, just the episode, you know, I really liked it. I liked how they treated Nam. I like Roshi, what they did with him. I like, I liked Goku. Um, you know, it's not like he's like, like him being kind of stupid and stuff. It's funny, but at the same time, I'm like, damn, I kind of wanted Nam to beat his ass a little bit. But, uh, at the same time, I don't, because I want that Roshi-Goku fight to be awesome. And I feel like it will be. Uh, I don't know if that's going to spawn two episodes, one episode. Either way, looking forward to that. We don't have that many episodes to go. I knocked out a good amount today. Um, I might do one or two more. Not sure. I might pick it up tomorrow. I want to finish this soon. I've been doing these episodes a little bit too long. Um, I need to get more anime reviews out there, um, and, but I want, I want to finish this first, and I'm enjoying this. This is what I was looking for. I'm going to give this episode a 4 out of 5. Love this episode. Nom, I'm, I'm glad he was in the game, Budokai Tenkaichi. I kind of want to play it a little bit. That's probably because I just recently sold it, um, I, which, eh, I'm, I'm doing this thing. Um, I'll play it again eventually. But in short, I want to just play it again, be Nam real quick, beat Goku's ass at the World Tournament, and just go from there. But, uh, may just fight a whole World Tournament as Nam, and if I can, I believe I can pick the people, so I'll just put Krillin, even though he's old, and I'll put Roshi, Kid Goku, um, Yamcha, the other characters aren't in it, but whatever, I'd do, I'd work it out, um, and I'd win with Nam. Go Nam! Uh, and with that, uh, yeah, great episode, thank you for watching, with that, I leave you. Alright, this is episode 26, we are nearing the end of the season, yes, um, I don't know how long this Roshi Goku fight is going, uh, this is the first episode, I assume just another episode, um, and then there will be some other stuff, and then the season will end, um, if it's anything like the DBZ seasons, um, the orange bricks uh, that I have, they, like, the episodes don't really end where they should. Usually it should always end at the end of the arc, but for some reason, sometimes they make the seasons, so they, like, I don't know. I don't know, like, who decides this, like, what episodes go into each season. Um, like, I, I'm going off of the bricks, so... Uh, I don't know if the Japanese decide, I don't know if Funimation decides, I don't know if Toei or whoever the fuck decides. This has nothing to do with this episode. Um, uh, it's like 6 in the morning and uh, I thought I'd watch some Dragon Ball to start off my day. Um, and yeah, um, so I was just saying that if I seem tired or I just woke up. Uh, plus I'm sick, so that's fun. Um, Anyway, in this episode, it's just Goku, Roshi, going back and forth. Uh, Goku, um, he immediately gets launched out of the arena, and he, I never knew he could do this. This is something completely new to me. He uses his tail as, like, a helicopter thing. Pretty cool ability right there. If he didn't have his, uh, tail, though, he would have lost right there. Unless he used the Kamehameha Wave, which he said he could do. And then him and Roshi had a Kamehameha Wave battle. Goku's starting to learn. He's like, something's not right here. You, you, you keep referring to yourself as Roshi. Um, so, like, because Roshi, he says some stuff. And so he was like, no, I'm related to him. And that's why I know the Kamehameha Wave and looks just like him. Uh, so they had a Kamehameha Wave battle. They both just kind of got launched. First, co first Kamehameha Wave battle. Uh, it was so, it was so good to see. Even... A lot of the energy beams don't look how they do in DBZ, but, um, you know, that's the future, so you can't become the future. Um, so yeah, I really like this episode. He also did some other stuff. He did, uh, this after image thing that I've never really seen him do before. And Goku, he's just copying, copying Roshi. And in Dragon Ball, that seems to be a recurring theme, that you can just... Oh, that took you 50 years to learn the Kamehameha Wave? Then people are just like, well, I saw you do it. Kamehameha Wave. 
It doesn't seem that special, uh, especially later in the series. But as for now, it's still just an amazing move. Uh, and then there's some more fighting. Uh, Goku kicks Roshi into that fucking wall. That wall is like almost completely destroyed because they just keep fucking hitting each other into that thing and just. Poosh. Um, so yeah, and then they d both use their own fighting style. Roshi pulls the drunken monkey, um, which is a real martial arts technique. Um, I, they called it, at least in the dub, like drunken boxing. I believe that's the actual term, drunken monkey. Um, and yeah, he's just whooping Goku's ass. And then Goku runs to your side of the ring. He thinks for a minute, and then he he what he called a crazy monkey, vicious monkey, something like that, where he basically just kind of turned into a monkey, and he's pretty much a monkey, as Frieza would say. Um, and you know. So, just, and he's like fighting on all fours, like he's fucking Naruto or something. And, yeah, I, I liked, I liked seeing that. Then the episode just kind of ended with Roshi being like, I'm going to hit you with my final attack. Only this isn't going to take ten episodes, probably, um, to get this one. But, um, I'm, I'm, I, these are Dragon Ball Z complaints, so I shouldn't be making them. Uh, but yeah, thank you for watching. Uh, I'm, I'm so happy to be close to done with the season uh and with that uh i leave you oh wait a uh, score uh four out of five fuck it yay interesting things are happening this episode 27 i believe 27 or 28 the world tournament has kind of shakily ended uh <clears throat> roshi pulled out uh some hypnotism i guess that's allowed um, never seen him do that before. Didn't know he could do that. Puts Goku to sleep. Then he wakes up with that food joke. I like that. Um, <clears throat> and then, uh, pulls out his big move. Kind of claps his hands together. Gets, like, this weird sunder thing. Puts it on Goku. And Goku is, like, electrocuted and has to give up. But just before he gives up, he sees the moon. Which I was always like, man, the moon... This doesn't always come out at night. It can come out during the day. That's exactly what happened. Turned to a great ape. Uh, and then from there, there was some, you know, gotta figure out what's going on with the great ape. I enjoyed the episode. Um, I kind of just want a normal fight to end it, but... Uh, can't always get what you want, but uh, that being said, thank you for watching, uh, I'm just cutting this one a little bit short, sorry, I'll give this a 4 out of 5, uh, on to the next one. We got episode 28, I look terrible, the world tournament arc is officially over, it's cold as shit, that's why I am bundled up in a blanket, like I am uh, before you, it's okay, nobody's gonna watch this. Um, that being said, in this episode... Uh, this is this is the the peak the peak we're there um we got Goku and Roshi um in the last episode uh, Roshi we assumed he shot down Goku and I was like I don't know where Goku went I was like actually kind of like where is he and it turns out that fucking Roshi blew up the moon which I had no idea he did that um I thought Piccolo blew up the moon um, if he did just blow up the moon, then what's his name? The carrot guy, he's fucking dead. Um, but yeah, uh, crazy, crazy stuff. Crazy. Um, after that, um, basically the match just continues like normal. Everyone just kind of okay with the fact that Goku has a, a grade 8 power up. Um, uh, I don't think they even cut off his tail. I, I assume they'll get around to it. Uh, but I guess he doesn't without a moon. Uh, but the moon has to come back eventually because uh, I know what happens in the future. Um, and Goku, again, he's oblivious to the fact that this just happened or why he's naked. Um, and then after that, they have like a four hour fight. Just hands. Just throwing hands. And it ends with the big iconic kind of kick I've seen before. And
And yeah, Roshi, he kind of, they have a 10 count, and they said whoever gets up and declares their win first, they'll win. Goku got up first, but he fell down before he could say anything. And then Roshi got up, claimed the victory. Roshi won. I honestly didn't know who would win. Uh, at one point, I actually thought Roshi got knocked out of the ring, but he was like dangled by his foot, uh, which was pretty cool, um, gotta love that, but, um, and then what happened after that, uh, Roshi won, uh, he, uh, the ending was actually pretty funny, but, um, some, he switched into the other costume, Goku's like, man, Jackie Chung, he's actually really strong, I want to be as strong as his, as him one day. And then Roshi, uh, they went out to eat, and then Goku ate, was so hungry, he ate enough to spend all the prize money. Like, 500,000 zenny, and it just went to fucking... Because Goku, like, when they do that in the show, when they just eat, like, incredible amounts, I'm always just like, god damn, how is that possible? And it's because, uh, I was like, who, who's paying the bill? And this is the first time that was answered, and it was actually pretty funny. Uh, that comes to the end of this arc. Personally, I think this is where the season probably should have just ended. Whatever, uh, we only got three episodes to go. I will see you guys then. Uh, thank you for watching, as always. Uh, actually, I'm gonna give a couple more thoughts. I... I like that Roshi one. I, I did. Because... Goku, he has this overconfidence issue. And he kinda, just because... He walks into things and he beats them. Like, he's kind of OP like that. And in the end, I think, as a character, it's okay because he uh, learns something usually. He is fighting for the good cause. He's yada, yada, yada. Um, does he become a wish fulfillment character sometimes? A little bit. A little bit. Um, so, and he does, that have, he does have that overconfidence thing. And I, in this episode, uh, you know, Roshi, he knows that. Uh, the overconfidence thing, like, that's an issue now in current Dragon Ball Z. Um, yeah. I've, I, I, so I like that Roshi won, taught him a lesson. And what else? I, th I think that's it. I just like the fact that Roshi won. I liked in the end it was just hand to hand fight thing, um, and I, I enjoyed the tournament uh, overall as a whole. Uh, I think the Red Ribbon Army is up next, that arc, um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Thank you guys for watching, I'm very looking forward to season 2, I don't know how long it will take to get there, but let's just finish these last three episodes, uh, maybe finish off this uh, this uh, season and then we'll worry about that in the future. Thank you for watching and with that I leave you. Right, I am I'm not quite sure on what episode we are at but we are right after the world tournament. This is at the beginning of the episode Goku's like you know what I'm gonna go on my own adventure and he just kinda leaves and yeah, I didn't, uh, I thought, like, I don't know how much of this saga he's by himself, but it seems like they're setting up he's gonna be by himself for a while, searching for the four-star ball. It doesn't care about the other six, you know, the ones that'll grant fucking, uh, immortality, or whatever the hell you want. I believe this is episode 29. Uh, yeah, so... We have maybe two episodes left in the season. Um, this episode, uh, it seemed very filler-esque. I don't know if this was in the manga. I kind of doubt it. Um, Nam, he... It, it stars Nam and fucking the Giren guy from the tournament, uh, basically. It brings up uh, the fact that, you know, Nam isn't going to have his water forever. He brings his water back. Uh, Goku stumbles upon him, and he basically, the, the reason they don't have water in the first place is this river uh, isn't spitting out water anymore. So they go to the source, uh, there's a giant bird that Goku fights because we got a stall. Um, 
and that's where what's his name lives, the fucking monster looking dude, and he has a whole posse of monster looking dudes, and he's a lot nicer, um, like, cause I know that like whole bar scene, I'm pretty sure that was filler, um, I don't know if this episode's filler, but um, he's, he's nicer, he's like, show this kid some respect, he beat me in the tournament, whereas before he didn't look like he could care about anything. So, yeah, uh, basically, he doesn't think, basically, there's, like, this weird gunk, uh, clogging up the river, and, uh, he's, like, you know, they use the river for their own means, so they don't necessarily want the river to explode, but he's, like, eh, let him take a shot at it, it's pretty much unbreakable. Goku is Goku, Kamehameha Wave, not even, like, a moment, like, oh, did it break? No, he just fucking breaks it. Everything's right as rain. Uh, if that river isn't enough, they got fucking, uh, they find a lake also. So, they got a lake and a river, and plus all the water. Plus, I'm sure he could make more trips, Nom. Um, so yeah. Uh, free water for Nom. And, um, not a whole lot developing here. It even puts uh, Yamcha and, and Bulma in them. They, they're going to this wherever the hell, and they instantly get hit by this storm, and their car breaks down, and they're just put right back to where we were. That's, that's filler for you. Like, if it's, a, if it's not filler, it's like when the side characters don't even move slightly in the destination, whatever. Okay, episode, in all honesty, uh, I like the beginning with Goku just kind of going off on by himself. I'll give this episode a 2 out of 5. It's okay. Thank you for watching. Uh, with that, I leave you. I'm having a little bit of a Dragon Ball marathon. Um, but, uh, <clears throat> in this episode, what episode is this? Like 30? Episode 30. Um, got a, a lot of shit going on in this episode. Uh, basically, start things out. Goku, he's looking for the Dragon Ball and. Uh, he's closing in on one, and just when that happens, all his shit gets robbed by this random ass kid. Um, I've seen enough of Goku's 12 year old penis, just saying. Um, but after, after that, um, after his stuff gets robbed, uh, meanwhile while that's going on, uh, the kid who took his stuff, he sells the dragon radar back in town, um, and so Goku tracks down that kid, he finds out where the shop was, and guess who's there? Emperor Pilaf, my favorite character. Not at all, really. Um, Emperor Pilaf's there, he's, you know, not the, now that the Dragon Balls are back, he's uh, searching for them too, and uh, we assume he's given one by the shopkeeper. Um, but it turns out it's just a fake, uh, because at the end of the episode, um, we learn that this guy just sells these fake Dragon Balls, and the Red Ribbon Army finally shows up, uh, and I don't know who their main leader guy in the center was, but the main leader guy, he just shot and killed him the second he saw the Dragon Ball because he knew it was a fake murder. Murder, just straight murder. Four kids, Funimation, uh, you should be watching. Uh, like not, like cold blood murder, like shot in the face. It was, like, the the show has taken a tone, a tone shift. Uh, so this is what the Red Ribbon Army does. I'm very interested to see, uh, the future. Uh, that being said, um, what did I think? of everything else. We didn't get to see what was going on with the others. I'm pretty okay with that. Emperor Pilaf, uh, meh. Uh, the main things were Goku, uh, well, the actual Dragon Ball was actually in that area, but it was like in a bird's nest. Uh, so after that, the episode just kind of ends and no one gets the Dragon Ball. So, uh, I guess, like, all these three people are, like, going, tracking this one Dragon Ball. I don't know if the Red Ribbon, Mar Red Ribbon Army has a Dragon Radar. Who fucking knows? 
speculations. Uh, I don't... I, Akira Toriyama, his fucking writing style makes no sense. We go from, like, random adventures, then we have a giant shonen tournament. Now we just put all the other characters to the side so we can have Goku by himself. Like, I don't understand his writing style. Um, and this is, like, his biggest thing, Dragon Ball. That's, like, his baby. And it, like, the first 30 episodes are just, like, so randomly paced. But I love it at the same time. Uh, I thought this was a good episode. Three out of five. Uh, we got one episode left, yeah! I'll see you guys then. With that, I leave you. The last episode in the season. Uh, it was... We're finally here after fucking months of fucking not doing this when I should have been doing this. Um, in this episode, which this episode uh, ends in a cliffhanger uh, because of the seasons, and this ultimately should have been in the next season, but um, for whatever reason, it's on here. I don't know whose choice that is, but uh, it's whatever. In this episode, uh, my god, just a lot of shit happens. A lot of stuff can happen to one little item. The little dragon ball that they were chasing got a bird carried it off. Uh, it got eaten by a giant monster. And then that giant monster got knocked out of the sky with a giant boulder by the Ox King. And um, what's meant to be used for a wedding. Um, Goku's wedding specifically. And God, I love how like they just randomly, it's like a year later and they just bring up Goku and they're like, oh yeah, I'm gonna marry him one day. And then Ox King is like, let me get that shit started. You're fucking like 12 years old, let's do it. Uh, so yeah, that's, they do that. And um, uh, I don't know how to feel about that. Goku runs into Chi Chi. Uh, they're doing their own thing, and meanwhile, Emperor Pilaf is trying to pretend to be Goku so he can just go in there and take the Dragon Ball. And that was actually pretty funny, I gotta admit. Just the whole Goku's head, and he's trying to be, um, kind of low-key and pretend to be Goku, and Pilaf and Maya are his cousins. I, I generally like that. And then everything gets fucked when the Red Ribbon Army shows up, and that's kind of where the episode ends. Um... Just real quick, it was a really nice episode. I'm sure this is going to lead to some shit. Um, it was mostly just story. I really liked it. Four out of five? Three out of five? I don't know. Um, as for the actual... I, wa I want to give my whole thoughts on the season. Um, it was very nice just to come to this world of Dragon Ball, which has such a, like, a unique premise was just like the random dinosaurs and the futurism and Akira Toriyama his writing like he gives no fucks none at all like he'll write just kind of he'll just go with it and sometimes that doesn't always work out especially with a lot of people just analyzing Dragon Ball all over the place but a lot of the times uh it's interesting uh, I'll say that uh so just to really see the birth of this world that I know so well and have praised for so long despite not actually seeing the origin and not even the origin, just the beginning of the fucking series, uh, it's, I'm finally getting around to it and I'm very happy to be doing that. Um, and just seeing Master Roshi, Krillin, uh, Launch, Bulma, Chi-Chi, uh, Oolong, Poor, Ox King, Chi-Chi, uh, the World Tournament Fighters, just a lot of characters is being introduced, and Yamcha even, uh, to see them, uh, and, to act, and the whole Roshi Goku thing, I love that. So, and just the training, the student relationship Goku has with Roshi and Krillin as his rival, I really like that arc. Uh, with that being said, uh, I'll probably do maybe a couple more animes before I get to season two, just so I have a break, and I'm, I'm low on my anime content. So I'll probably do that, uh, but with that being said, thank you for watching. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed, if you watched this far, uh, I enjoyed, uh, I enjoyed this. I hope you enjoyed 
watching my first impressions for a story that's pretty important to me. Um, I'll get my review out hopefully soon. Uh, with that, as always guys, thank you for watching. Uh, with that, I leave you.